It's so dumb. Welcome to the Get Offset Podcast. My name is Andrew. And I'm Emily. <laughs> And I'm Tom. And we're here. Yeah, we're here this <laughs> there we week go. with with Tom Cram from Spiral Effects. Is that right? Spiral Electric Effects. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by a high pitched sound. I think my smoke detector's going off. <laughs> I'm gonna go figure out why that's going off and make sure that smaller humans in the area are not lighting things on fire. I'll be. What a start. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry. Sorry, Tom. No, no worries. How hey. are you doing on this fine, this I'm fine Sunday morning? Do, 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 you, do people call you M or just mm-hmm. Emily? Uh, no, uh, not many people call me M. Not many people are allowed. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> no, uh, some people do, and it's usually fine. But um, there is this one time like i just i fought against that nickname a long time but um it's typically like people who are really close to me or have lived with me call me m because i get it three syllables a lot i remember once there's this woman i worked with and she was younger and she was really kind of rude and i didn't really like working with her um she just she just felt like she knew everything like coming into her first job and i was trying to explain like just trying to like help her writing be better. That was part of the job, like mm-hmm. writing concise social copy. And uh, she was really was not good at taking constructive criticism. Things like, I think that if you put this part in the beginning, it would just like flow better. She's like, well, I think it's fine. And that kind of stuff. And I remember when she came up behind me, she was like, M, 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 hey, M, M, M. And finally I turned, I'm like, that's not my name. Do not you, call me that. You never know. I, I have a, a an old friend uh, named Emily, and uh, she she goes by M. So if if I if I accidentally say it, it's because of habit. <laughs> I don't I don't this. really get offended by it. Um, I would. It's it's kind of just like I think that if someone irritates you as much as this woman irritated me, yeah, it doesn't matter what they call you. Your nickname. <laughs> like you don't you don't deserve my nickname. Uh, I hear that. I need I need to like you. <laughs> first my husband doesn't call me him um yeah but sometimes i get a, bu- a business email for like to get all set stuff and someone will call me and say like thanks him i'm like all right whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah it'd be like somebody calling me tommy i'm like no that's uh, that's, that's reserved for my grandma <laughs> yeah or emmy my my niece can call Ooh. me emmy but that's about it yeah that's well, back, so. kids. yeah so your house is burning down? Oh, he can't hear me yet, can he? Not yet, not yet. Everything, everything good? Oh, you're on mute, buddy. <laughs> Ooh, and oh, and he just turned off his video. <laughs> They're right next to each other. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God, that's my tummy. Um, I was not ready for that. any of that. Um, culprit. Uh, I just looked this thing for five seconds straight, and either I have become immune to it at this point, or this is dead. It's dead. Um, so house is not burning down, but talk about timing for it to decide to, uh, hey, uh, you need to change your battery. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has been about six months since most people change their batteries. Most people do them on like the. No, wait, it's a good reminder. They do on daily change their batteries. Right. It, this is your this is your reminder. Change the batteries on your smoke detector. Spend yeah. like the seven dollars or whatever for the pack of nine volts from Costco and uh, do that. Uh, that way, uh, in the future, when you've got distinguished guests on a podcast, you won't uh, have to walk away from them. <laughs> yeah, man, I um, I lived in an apartment. My last apartment had one of those wired in <laughs> smoke detectors, so we never had to change the battery, and it was pretty fantastic. That sounds nice. Um, I'm honestly, I'm surprised we had a smoke detector. I don't, I don't know. This place is old. I, my landlord's um. I don't know. They're they're not so you, very you spendy. Know, yeah, we'll say that. Is it up some to strange code? alarm happening? Yeah, I was like, where is it? <laughs> and so I just had to run outside, grab the ladder, check it for spiders, because that's a thing in Seattle. Uh, yep, bring it inside. Season. Yep. Spider season. Uh we uh, I was walking out to work last week and just like straight face through a spider web. I'm like, really? In my beard? Disrespect. Ew. Um, I know was bad 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Carrie's been making some friends with spiders. <laughs> okay, confession. I actually grabbed the stepladder first, and then I couldn't reach the smoke detector, so then I had to go outside because I'm short. <laughs> you still did that pretty quickly, though. Uh, it's uh, the extra speed that my Star Wars flannel pajama bottoms give me. Oh, I was like, I hope those aren't real jeans when I saw them. Uh, no, these are, uh, I've got TIE Fighters and the Millennium Falcon and X-Wings plastered all over these bad boys. Yeah, if you're listening to the audio version of the podcast, there's a video version on YouTube. And uh, when Andrew got up, we could see his. Pajamas. I wasn't planning on standing. <laughs> I, I brought all of my props this time to the front of the room so I wouldn't have to move. Should because... I offer something kind of embarrassing since you just had something embarrassing happening on the video? Sure. Uh, I let my niece <laughs> paint my nails yesterday. And it's a That's little nice. It's a, it's not the best Manny. It's a little, a little, a little, little blotchy. No, I think Rick likes like, look at that one. It's not even whatever. Um, but she's getting better at it. <laughs> So my husband, he was like, he was like, I think I like, I like, I like the nail polish. I'm like, I'll buy nail polish, but I would like for you to this morning go out and buy nail polish remover because I can't go out in public with my nails looking like this. I, can't. I like it. It's a, it's a little goth. Yeah, that's a dark blue. Well, she's really into Halloween, my niece, ah, um, nice. and spooky stuff, which I I appreciate because I'm into. I was always into spooky stuff when I was little. I've been watching the show Evil on Netflix, and uh, they're the main. It's kind of like the X Files, but instead of a, a guy obsessed with aliens, it's a guy who's a priest, and uh, they're like there's like exorcism stuff and demonic possessions and miracles. And then the lady is a skeptic, and the lady who's a skeptic, she has four daughters, and they're all obsessed with spooky stuff like zombies. And I'm like, I'm into it. There's a reason that horror movies have learned that their biggest fan base is teenage girls because it's true my wife loves horror movies um so I'll, I'll have to let her know that evil is good evil evil like watching evil will feel a little bit like watching the x-files like it's like it's kind okay. of cheesy it's you know there's some scary stuff in it but it's just like it's cheesy it's like on cbs or something normally so okay it's not like a spooky spooky it's not the, it's not the haunting of bly manor I'm into into horror novels and stuff like that, but uh, there and I like horror movies too. But uh, my wife will watch like slasher stuff, and I'm not into the slasher thing. But uh, I like slasher stuff. I don't like ghosts, gore. Yeah. Oh yeah. I just don't like I don't like gore like Hellraiser, the first Hellraiser. Like, right. I I had to turn that one off. I think I was kind of like my stomach was feeling in a weird place. I'm like ah, I don't need to watch this goopy. That's an intense goop. movie though too. I mean, even now you watch Hellraiser one, and it's like wow, how did that even get made? <laughs> if and I'm gonna like, go, no, no. Well, a little bit, yes and no. Uh, I, I like the psychological stuff. Uh, if it, so, like Silence of the Lambs, brilliant. Uh, you want to talk Saw, love it. Uh, but when it's getting like into the more demonic stuff, I'm like not as excited about it. I don't know. <laughs> Makes you feel um, weird. And then X Files, how dare you disrespect the X Files? No, I love X Files. <laughs> Where did I disrespect X Files, Tom? You did you hear me? I didn't, I didn't know. I love cheesy stuff. I called evil cheesy, actually. I was talking about evil, evil cheesy, but the X Files, like, like the, the sure, fine, whatever episode. You can't call that not cheesy. Yeah, there's, there's, there's the periods. She's right. right. There are some cheesy episodes in X Files, but I'm I'm a big fan of X Files. And too. there's some well, really great. Kind of I love X Files. I've seen every episode. Actually, I think I missed part of the seasons where it was like the guy from T two. Instead of David Duchovny. Oh yeah, uh, Patrick. Um, uh, yeah. I get him and the his brother mixed Andrew up. Andrew is just <laughs> Andrew is seething. Look at him. <laughs> I want to believe. Um, I love X Files. Good lord. All right, all right, all right, all right. But yeah, no, that's that's kind of I like sci fi. I like psychological stuff. That's about that's what excites me. But yeah. nothing's gonna like make me like go to bed like pissing myself. So at least not likely. <laughs> I say that now and then someone's going to recommend something. I'm going to sit down and watch it and I'm going to end up like sleeping in the bathtub with an axe. The movie that, that we watched recently that I think really messed up my husband was Open Water. Really? Yeah. He can't swim. Oh, so there's an extra layer there for him. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I really wanted to watch this because it's like, it's so low budget and it did so well. 
And that usually bodes well when like it didn't get a big budget, but people flocked to see it. And I, yeah, I just really, he, he was just sitting on the sofa like, oh, <laughs> I felt really, I felt kind of bad about it. <laughs> paddle, paddle. <laughs> But we had gone from Hellraiser to Open Water, so a movie that was like making me feel just kind of nauseated mm. to make to a movie that made him go, uh oh. That's called payback. Yeah. So I, so I, lo- I love like Rotten Tomatoes for stuff like that too, because I'm a huge sci fi fan too, but there's a lot of really bad sci fi movies out there. And so it, my, my rule is if it's got over 65% on Rotten Tomatoes from the audience score, I'll watch it. And usually it ends up being pretty good. But yeah, if you're down in the 40s, no, no bueno. That's, you just got to MST3K that stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you got to sit down and choose an intoxicant of your choice and just make fun of it the entire way through. Oh, the couple okay. no. Just don't even give it a chance. It's not worth it. <laughs> no, that's fun. I think it's just as long as you're getting enjoyment out of what you're watching. Um. But uh, just to change the subject, because we're about 10 minutes in, I know Andrew has a new pedal that he's kind of excited to share. I do. I, so I borrowed this exact unit. Well, not the one in my hand. So I borrowed a pedal from uh, my friend Cam over at Gibbs Sunday and Tone Throne. And I had it for about a month, month and a half and loved it. But uh, the thing with borrowing is you have to give it back. I know you learned that the hard way from me too. I know. Uh, I had to give back a lot of things I was borrowing yesterday. <laughs> it's like oh. like going through my shelf. I'm like, I borrowed this from Cam. I borrowed this from Emily. I'm just gonna, just gonna okay. We'll take two trips. Um, so I ended up. I knew I had to give it back. I had to have one for myself. So I ended up buying one. I did it. I purchased it. It's mine. I don't have to give this back to anybody. I haven't even taken oh, Ernie it. Ball volume pedal tuner. Cool. And if, if you well now, now you can see the camera in reverse. Um, but it's even got it's even got the plastic, so we're gonna try something. I'm gonna turn up the gain on this just a little bit. And I'm gonna oh, see you're doing some ASMR stuff. <laughs> He's doing some ASMR. Nice. Ruined a little bit by your phone notification, Andrew. Well, that was actually mine, I think. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Ooh, I'm... ASMR for your phone notification. Some others are like, yes, what I've always been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> because nothing says I, uh, someone's calling you like ASMR. Or just but, that, that like the anxiety version of ASMR is just a phone notification going off and you can't get to your phone. You're like, <sighs> yeah, somebody, somebody is in distress. Yeah, I got a new I got a, the new a new phone yesterday, and I was doing the the transfer from old fo- iPhone to new iPhone, which is really really cool how easy that is to do. Truly, um, but it takes like two hours, and it will still like ding all the notifications and text messages, but you can't see any of them because both of your phones are out of commission. You're like, Ugh, I don't the like world it. is passing me by. <laughs> Well, I had to It's tell, like a smoke detector, except you can't take the battery out. There you go. Well, I just, I had, we were supposed to see my husband, my, my, my husband and I were supposed to go visit my brother last night. We did, but uh, before that, I was like, can you just text my brother and let him know that my phone's not working and to just kind of go through you for phone stuff because I don't want him to think I'm ignoring him for two hours. Well, yeah, I got to say that uh, um, as much as I've come to rely on, on my phone and text messages, um, I went over plan, or sorry, we went over plan last month, and so we had to turn off a bunch of stuff. So when I was traveling uh, to the shop and back, I had my phone off, and I got to say, that was actually a pleasure. Not having my phone yeah. dinging all the time, and not having to worry about if somebody's texting me while I'm at a stoplight. It was nice. Become too reliant. Yeah, that's, that's why I know I don't want Wi-Fi in airplanes. Make it stop. No more. I, I want my boss to know that I'm on an airplane that he cannot reach me. I mean, you're out of like like an hour or two. I mean, the, I'll work on the plane joke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, anyways, uh, Ernie Ball volume tuner, uh, VP Junior tuner, and it's even got the effects loop on the back, and uh, I'm in love. Buffered effects loop, which is kind of neat. Um, so that was new for me this week. The other thing new for me this week. Um, well, sort of not new for me, but for everybody else, is I've been selling these shirts. Oh, it's and, a theme. Uh, I sold a lot more than... What? It's a theme. 
Volume what? pedals swell. Tom cut out for a second. It, it is swell, swell with, with my soul. And uh, the graphics is almost the same size as this, which is kind of neat. But yeah, no, I sold a lot more than I thought I was going to. And I uh, just wanted to say thank you for everyone who bought a shirt. And I'm really excited to see photos. Uh, first photo that came in through my news feed, someone tagged me and they're like, hey, look, Andrew, I got my shirt. And I'm like, I actually cried a little bit at like, <laughs> not like full, Aww. full cry, but like they're like, like the sniffles and the, it choked up. Yeah. So uh, there's something special about other people looking at something that I made and like, I want that. I want to wear that. Yes. So it's kind of cool. Nice. So well, actually, I feel that I way. I stuff this week. Snags on my pedals. I, I, it really is. I'm, it feels like when somebody likes your song, seriously, it's like, wow, I, I had a connection yeah. with somebody, albeit brief. Yeah, we just got an email from our publicist about somebody who likes a Sunday Crush song. And I was like, oh, my God, I love this person who likes this song. And she <laughs> likes my song. Well, I didn't have anything to do with it, but I play it sometimes. But yeah, I got something new kind of thanks to Andrew. This is this is a thing that was proctored through Andrew. It's I know what this big, is. It's very large. Is it? I was under the impression it was smallish. <sighs> Yeah, small. Oh, wow. It's a pod go. And I'm excited. Yeah, so this is uh this was sent to us by our friends at well, I guess Andrew's friends at line six. Mm-hmm. And uh this is something I'm gonna demo and then I'm just gonna give to Andrew as a uh, birthday gift. <laughs> <laughs> My birthday Andrew was like, Andrew was like, if you when you demo it, can I like buy it from you from like for like a friend raid? I'm like, yeah, sure, just tell me what's fair. And he's like, oh, well, there's no really used ones. I'm like, I there's no fair. used ones. I was looking it. on Reverb, and there's no buying guide. I'm like, I don't know what a fair price is. I, I, I thought don't that's wanna... what you. I thought you were hinting at give it to me the whole time. Honestly, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was like, that. like I don't want to offer you like 200 bucks for it because that would seem rude. But anyways, yeah. oh, I whatever. appreciate it. I've got something here. I just finished this build. Just a sec. Okay. I'm excited. <gasps> oh. 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 Oh, why does that look so familiar? So this is a... Oh, um, my God. What? Okay, now... Tone, tone Bakery body. Um, triple P9. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, they yeah. had a sale a few months ago. Then I put a, a Mighty Might neck on it with, uh, with Spurzels. And uh, that's yeah, that's my latest build. It sounds freaking great. <laughs> that looks that so looks much so like a guitar good. I was just working on. I was really? just working on an offset berry so with that same body, same pick guard, and all the configuration. And he wanted to put um, those uh, out. What are those? Kind of like aluminum lace pickups that are supposed to be drop in P ninety replacements, but are not. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, and a wiring kit from Gun Street. And I was trying to put the lace pickups in. And I'm just like filming a video for the Patreon supporters because if you're if you support us on Patreon, you get bonus content. And part of that is the soldering videos because I don't want like the world to see them. But I'm just like unassembling this guitar. I put the wire new wiring harness in. I'm just figuring it out. And finally I take out the old pickups and I try to drop the new ones in and they don't friggin'. Oh no. And they don't fit because they're not actually they're not actually dropping replacements. They're they're more square. So it's just kind of like resting on the hole. And I, I message again, I'm like, I'm not going to drill into your guitar. I refuse to drill into a, someone else's guitar. Like, that's just like w electronic soldering. I can do all day. I love soldering, but I'm not going to do something irreversible on someone else's guitar ever. Because um, I'm not a luthier. <laughs> I'm not going to hack into it with my grandfather's planer. Like, no. So would you uh, need a screwdriver and a hammer? So yeah, I no. Uh, so he understood, and I just I finished the wiring. I was showing him. So you just I'm mean, like you just take off the strings, and then you can do the little, and like then you'll just beat it. It'll be done. It'll be fine. It'll be easy. And because uh, he didn't want to take it, like the turnaround time right now for guitar work is long mm -hmm. because everyone was so they everyone was closed for months for COVID. So like to take it to Mike and Mike's, it would have been like mid November by the time it got done. But yeah, I was, uh, as I was holding the guitar, I'm like, this is really cool. 
Well, I, it's, well congratulations on your new build. Yeah. Thank you. It, it turned out really cool. The, 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 the Tone Bakery guy has it wired up in a really cool way. Um, the, the middle P90 is reverse wound, um, but it's always on. Okay. So no matter how you switch it, it's always noise canceling. And you have two volume controls, so you can oh. you blend that in and out. And so, yeah, it's it's a uh, uh, all right. I haven't ever had a had a, a, a P ninety wired like that, but it it makes a difference. It sounds a little a little, a little different from a regular P ninety because of that reverse wound, but it's still P ninety right. yeah. all day long. Sure, awesome. sure. Yeah, I've got the. I don't know if when we edit, it's going to be in frame. So let me just grab it. But I've got this guy right here. It's a Telecaster uh, for the home listeners. It's my uh, Modern Player Thinline Telecaster. That was my first guitar. I bought it in 2000, 2011, 2012, might have been 2011. And I love the thing, but that's always been like the one thing. I'm like, I just want a little less noise out of it. p 90 sound great. Just the noise can be a little bit much. So I've always been, anytime someone says, I've got P90s and there's some sort of noise canceling going on, I'm like, tell me more. Hello? I don't know. Should yeah. I uh, should I do that myself? Yeah, you could do it. You could do a dummy coil on that or something like that and hide it under the pit guard. Ooh, I like that. I've heard Ooh, a couple that's... guys do that, and it works pretty well. I'm going to think about that. If there's space, you, know, you, you don't want to dig a hole in it, you know. I haven't opened this thing up in a while. Uh, it's been a few years. I don't remember. It's a semi hall. There's always room, right? Yeah, well, there you go. It, put it through the <laughs> apple and a little bit of super glue on it. Just stick it against the side and feed it through the the ground. Yeah, it doesn't matter uh, where the dummy coil is. It, it really can be anywhere on the guitar. That's interesting. I don't think I've ever considered that before. Now my mind's like spinning in every direction, going, "I need to do this now." <laughs> so I'm thinking of this Cabernita, how noisy it is. Those are those are single coils for the Jazz Master single coils, but it's pretty noisy. <laughs> Oh, is that well, one of this the, is the new alternate, bring, uh, alternate universe fenders? Is that what that is? So you've got a Cabernet to that's got Paranormal Jazz Master series. pickups. That's cool. Yeah, it's I like it a lot. It feels it feels really nice. It feels like a much more expensive guitar than it is. My husband likes it too. Yeah, I like the tuxedo. Yeah, why don't? Are you yeah, leaving? I like yeah. the I like the. The black and the the white guitars with the black pick guards. I'm a big fan of. I have a bunch, but they're not all hanging up behind me. If it's not going to be orange, then I suppose that will do. <laughs> <laughs> I have a slight well, obsession with orange. Slight. Um. The oh, guitar. I see I moved you. The guitar so it can be in frame this yeah. week. I was about to say, but now your head's blocking it. I know. I need to swap it with a bass. Yeah. So, so what maker is that? Uh, this one's a Jennings, and I actually got it at Nam, um, or picked it up at Nam. It's a Voyager Deluxe, and it's I'm, I'm seeing a bound, so bound show and board block inlays. All right, so oh, nice. Let's see how close we. It's got the the dog hair on it. it oh, it's a beauty. And then the back on it. And yeah, double bound body, bound and blocked neck, matching headstock. And this thing is my dream. How do you like that uh, B3 Bigsby? I haven't had a guitar with Bigsby before, but I'm uh, I'm really loving it actually. It's got like it's it. just got the nice kind of feel for when because I don't I don't do any dive bombs or anything too crazy these days. Right. So it's just nice at the end of like a, a whole note or something, just give it a little bit of of touch in there. Subtle yeah. and shimmery. Yeah, I'm a yep. huge, huge fan too. Love it. And I'm a huge orange fan. Um, I've got I have a Fernandez H series. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but uh, it's a, a cream sickle orange. So I'll. All right. I'll send you a picture of it if you're if you're uh, obsessed with orange because it's about as orange as it I can. am. <laughs> he is. Dude, send me a picture. I'll check it out. Can test is obsessed. I might even drool just a smidge. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a scudge drool. I should probably see a therapist about that. But there's there's priorities. Well, uh, why don't we thank our sponsors? Then we'll jump into the episode. How about how about that? 
This week's episode of the Get Offset Podcast is sponsored by my therapist, Morgan. No, uh, <laughs> this week's episode of the Get Offset Podcast is sponsored by DistroKid. Uh, they make it easy and affordable to put your music online. Spotify, Instagram stories, iTunes, Apple Music, Tidal, Napster, Deezer, iHeart, whatever they are now. Um, and I did a video last week going through some of the fun features, including uh, they have a, a meme video generator. And so I put one of my songs into that Yoda meme where it's Baby Yoda and he's turning the the thing on on the spaceship. And then it's like it starts playing my music and then the Mandalorian turns it off and Baby Yoda turns it back on. And <laughs> it was like pretty cute. And that one was free. <laughs> that that's... cost zero dollars and zero cents. Like that was, was that was quality entertainment. It was super cute and uh, also a good reminder that we are, the day this episode comes out, we are uh, 14, 15, 16, 13. 17 days away from Mandalorian dropping season two. Oh, nice. Nice. I'm excited for that. This is the way. Uh, I will once again wait for all of the episodes to air. So you can binge. And then I will get a one month of Disney Plus and then I will binge. Yeah, we do the same thing. Probably not their part of their business model. But I don't have kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's the only original content they've got on the show or on the on the platform. That's that's not already been released out into the public. So I guess oh. not original content, but uh, like platform specific content. Everything yeah. else is what exclusive. Done. So yeah, what would you say the ratio for. of good yeah. good to, to to mediocre episodes of Mandalorian were? Yeah, I didn't. I thought Baby Yoda was pretty cute, and I really liked Amy Sedaris in it. And I just felt like the okay. I just I think that season one I usually let a lot slide in a season one because I think it takes a while for a good show to find its footing. So I, uh, I think there was maybe two to two or three episodes that are okayish, and the rest were phenomenal. I'm I'm right there with you. Uh, I I there were a couple. Of, I was like, oh, this is kind of getting into you know. Um, Jar Jar Binks territory um, but uh, the rest of them were great <laughs> the episode that a lot of people really hated um, was the Tatooine episode and I gotta say that was one of my favorites and actually, I actually think they did a really solid job with it that's the one with the the, 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 the the female bounty hunter right yep 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 oh I like that one I did too yeah that was the episode with Amy Sedaris a lot of people really yeah. didn't like it for a couple of things they thought it was uh, they were pandering to fans I'm like I'm not complaining all right, um, uh, and then the the scene with the with the Sam people and the sign language and people are like, well, we don't like that either. I'm like, I, I don't know. It's just adding layers. Well, just then, I like all it's, of it. okay. it's okay to not like things, but don't like as you say, don't yuck someone else's yum. <laughs> <laughs> but I do that a lot, so yeah, I like to say I uh, don't yuck someone's um, yum. I don't need to know what tickles your pickle and I don't. Yeah, be that's my the gherkin. big thing, man. <laughs> I've, that's I, I don't I don't I don't need to know. I don't I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Like, just don't tell me those things. And I've gotten messages from guys who I think thought they were like meaning well. And then they were like, but just like every time I see a woman with a guitar, I just get like titillated. I'm like, I don't care. Really? <laughs> Talk about it with your therapist. Yeah, no. Yeah, I've gotten that. That's weird. It is huh. weird. I agree. I don't talk. To, I try to not talk to that person, but he is out there. So, so uh, my, my wife actually accuses me. She says the only, the only, the only part of my life where I'm, I'm sexist is with uh, female vocalists. And, I, and when she first told me, I'm like, what, what are you talking about? She's no, it looks in your collection. How many female vocalists do you have? And I went through and I'm looking and I'm like, Oh my God, she's right. But it was like a totally unconscious thing. But like, this is yeah. like a weird tie in. But uh, even with the female vocalists that I like, I would, I would, it would never cross my mind to send them an email saying, well, that's just, oh, it's creeptastic. Sorry. I'll it's start ranting. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't need to share that. <laughs> Although uh, I've heard from, from, you know, I think my wife people... and other female friends that the guys will come out of the blue with just weird comments and emails like that too. So I don't know. Yeah. But, A guy just messaged us the word come one day and i was like why yeah that was weird <laughs> that was not great unsolicited not fun anyways that's our uh, that's our sponsorship bit for district oh. <laughs> i might i might cut that in post uh if you're interested in trying out this show kid 
Yeah, we, we took so that conversation sorry, in a weird place. I'm so sorry, sorry Daniel. That. I'm so sorry, Daniel. Uh, uh, sort of kid's like, we trusted you. <laughs> if you're interested in trying out Distro Kid, well, now it's a memorable sponsor shop. Sponsor <laughs> spat. Uh, if you're interested in trying out Distro Kid, you can save 7% on your first year with the link in the video description, and that helps support the podcast directly and financially. If you're also interested in... in uh, Oh, shoot. It's the week. Andrew, it's the week of the Patreon naming all the people because we oh hit goodness. a milestone we did. on Patreon where we are now, we have go- set some goals and we're not going to discuss the other goal. If you want to see the other goal, you must go to, um, you must go to patreon.com slash get offset and help us get to that goal because I'm not going to say it out loud. Hmm. But uh, now I get to name, I get to name every single one of our 23 patrons because that was the thing. So uh, I would like to firstly apologize if I get your name wrong. I am going to go through these very quickly. I'm going to name them and Andrew is going to say thank you. David Ishizaka, AKA the Timber Owls is his band. Thank you. Jay Ryan Conklin. Thank you. Lauren Kelly. Thank you. Dan Morrison. Thank you very much. Andrea Kay. Thank you. David Mulvaney. Thank you. Patrick Pine. Thank you. Damian Martinez. Thank you. Paul Heimberg. Thank you. Tyler Cochran. Thank you. Juan Ortiz. Thank you. Steve Rao. Thank you. Tom Kelly. Thank you. Stephen Davies. Thank you. Mark Packman. Thank you. Joe Braga. Thank you. Jason Weiser. Thank you. Jim Burns. Thank you. Zach Hale. Thank you. Aliyah Franson. Thank you. Jeff Covey. Thank you. Noah Barnett, a.k.a. Barn Owl Cello. If I could make an owl sound for this instead of saying thank you, I would, but I'm just going (laughs) to say thank you. And our first, our, our original patron. Jason Fuzzmonger. Thank you. He was the first one. He found he found the Patreon Patreon before we started promoting it. <laughs> <laughs> that OG, love it. OG, so, yeah. so we, just, we didn't things. want to promote it until someone just found it. So is that one of those things where you say uh, thank you enough that it starts to sound weird underneath your tongue, and you're like, I'm not sure I can say this right anymore. <laughs> it's enough to make me really question how strange the English language is but I'm not tired of saying thank you because I love all of our patron sponsors oh there you, you go could have that, mixed that's up the, the right answer right yep. there we go you could have said um, Dankeschön Dankeschön uh, Merci Gracias, Gracias. Um, and... let's hear uh, Mazel Tov no that's not it um, that's, that's more like a you're welcome <laughs> Um, just to say, imagine if we just said you're welcome before we instead of saying thank you to each one of these. Jason Fuzzmonger, you're welcome. Noah Burnett, what can I say? Except Tom Kelly, you're, you're welcome. welcome. Joe Braga, you're welcome. I actually recognize <laughs> you names. So that's some some hey. online friends. It sounds like I know. Yeah, some good folks. But um, thank you to everybody who does that. Um, Andrew and I actually just ran the numbers. Oh, I just ran the numbers, Andrew. Yeah. And uh, as of, uh, I think, just the other month, we are, as as a podcast and geared at my channel, no longer in the red on our direct expenses for the podcast, including website hosting, podcast hosting, um, the tools we use to record the podcast, even expenses like getting uh, Andrew and I both Soyuz launchers um, to improve our audio quality. Got to do something to make my voice sound palatable. So yeah, thank you to all of you. Uh, as we said last week, you've made this a less financially irresponsible <laughs> endeavor. Yes. And uh, that is very much appreciated. Yeah. So the, the, the Soyuz, is that, the, is that the mic you guys are using? Uh, no, we're, it's... Um, what is it? It's, I, it's, it's a, like a cloud lifter and a preamp. Oh, okay. It's just a little boxy thing and you plug it in and then you put the phantom power and it makes things like SM57s. It gives them um, more volume is the most obvious difference in a, in a nice character boost. If, if you're curious, I, I did do a demo of it where I, I sing into it and I play, play guitar into it. And I can especially hear the difference on a mic guitar. It's really neat. 
Oh, cool. It was like less buzz and room sound. Yeah, it was it was a nice fun experiment. After uh, having one for about a month, month and a half now, I can't believe I had had one sooner. And yeah, I, I'm going to have fun with this. And I might need to buy more. So are you going through it right now? <laughs> oh, yeah. Mike's my just a, uh, I'm using I'm, mine right now. I'm using mine right now. And uh, the mic I'm using is actually just a Shure E609. Just with a little doodad on it. It doesn't even yeah. fit. I don't know if you can see, but it doesn't even reach the bottom of it. Oh, huh. But it's good enough as a pop filter. Yeah. Oh. All right. Well, uh, let's let's change subjects a little bit here. I know I'm I'm lacking in a really like classy transition, but Tom, we're having you on the show, and we uh, want to hear more about your your background because you have done some phenomenal things. Thank and, you. And uh, for those of us listening, remind us what company you uh, are uh, you started off with. Um, so I started working uh, for Digitech and DoD uh, in '95 ish. Um, I, I started on the uh, the production floor, uh, building RPs and and stomp boxes and stuff like that. And then I worked at, in the DoD marketing department um, after that, um, with a little bit of a transition to uh, what is called we, we call sound tests, which is where a bunch of musicians were in a room and we test all the pedals that were made and that kind of stuff. Um, then I then I switched over from there to working for DBX. I worked for DBX for uh, about eleven years, so um, a long time. And then uh, switched from uh, DBX to uh, Harmon Pro, um, the Pro Audio division. Um, and I worked there all the way up until twenty eleven, I think. Um, and, and then I uh, moved from Harmon Pro to Digitech and DoD again, and uh, I started there as artist relations. And then uh, after that, I shifted over to uh, a product manager and then to, to running the place. And I ran it for about eight, about eight years, a little, a little less than eight years. And so uh, that, that's, that's my main history. Then after uh, Samsung bought uh, Harman, um, I started Spiral, uh, Spiral Electric Effects. And I've been doing that for the past a little over uh, just, no, just about two years now. So my own company. And uh, that's kind of the last 20-ish years in a nutshell. That's a, that's a big nutshell. Holy cow. Yeah. Um, Full disclosure, I couldn't hear all of that. Oh, no. <laughs> it, it cut out just a little bit, but I got most of it. Yeah, and, and sometimes it cuts out for us, but since it's recording locally... I think the listeners will hear everything just fine, but okay. I couldn't hear a lot of that. All right. Well, I, didn't want to I think Andrew probably right. heard more than me. I don't want to bore anybody by going through a review. I guess the, the, the quick thing is, is I worked for Harmon for 20 plus years and then ran Digitech for uh, and DOD for eight. Nice. And uh, talk about an impact that, that's had on uh, a whole lot of people. I know for myself, I've got a handful of the pedals um, from you guys right here. Nice. Um, oh, that's fine. My, yeah, he's got this, my 440. This is your 440, but I've adopted it for now. Um, I have a lot box. of envelope filters that you're fine. Um, I've got an FX 65 and an FX 67. I've got, uh, the volume and expression here. And I think that's all I've got right this moment. I, um, but that's by what I've had right now. It is on, Oh, I've got a rubber neck as well. Oh, nice. Um, oh, you do? Yeah. So you, yep. you got actually a bunch of this stuff. Yeah, I, let, I did is... demo that rubber neck. Thank you. That yeah, was yeah. That took a long time. Uh, a labor of love for us. Rubber neck is... Uh, I love it. <laughs> it's just <so laughs> Everyone cool. I know who has one really loves it. I remember it came out about the same time that MXR... Um, uh, carbon copy deluxe came out and I'm just looking at the two side by side. And I was, I think I was working at guitar center at the time and I'm just like, why would anyone go with the MXR? This is so much, this sounds better. It's got more features. Like, what are you guys doing? I just like wanted like every person that came through to buy an MXR, uh, carbon copy deluxe. I just kind of want to chuck it out. I'm like, stop <laughs> making bad Get choices. The <laughs> Get the weirder pedal. Yeah. I had the regular carbon copy for a while and it was fine. Carbon copy is a great pedal, and I mean it's fine. Been on my board for a while too, and, and it's uh, 
I don't know. It, yeah. it, the rubberneck is, uh, it was very much a labor of love. It, it took us almost five years to, to, to create. Um, I drew it out on a napkin wow. uh, really early on, on you know, the, the basic layout for it and what features I wanted on there. And the, 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 what I drew on the napkin and what actually got produced were very, very similar. There's only like, you know, the, the rubberneck feature was pretty much the only thing that changed from that, that, uh, that napkin drawing. But uh, it was cool because um, it was one of those projects where even though it took a long time to do, and we had a lot of resistance from uh, the higher ups, all the guys on my team really believed in it. So it was something where, you know, it would, it would always get pushed forward and everyone would be like, you know, where are we on this project and that kind of stuff. So even though it's, it's a kind of an idiosyncratic pedal um, and it was, it was I, I kind of designed it for myself it ended up being fairly universal. A lot of guitar players dig it. So I did, did yeah. something right. <laughs> it's a, uh, you, you did. I, I love exactly how I always say this in the demos. Um, I really appreciate any pedal that goes weirder than it, that you might think that it needs to, <laughs> cause it's, it's one thing to like pull back a pedal and like be like, oh, this goes weirder than I want it to. But if you want it to go like extra and it doesn't do that, that's so disappointing. So it's, it's interesting you say that because that's actually one of the changes that, that uh, I really championed when I, when I resurrected DOD and started doing the revamp and the Digitech. Because I, I felt like a lot of the stuff up to that point was really, um, really polite. Um, cause there's, there's like the Jason Lamb okay. era where stuff was crazy. And then for a long time going, going through, you know, the, the, the later FX series and into the hardware stuff, it felt really, I don't want to say boring cause that's the wrong word. It just felt really polite. And so I, I kind of wanted to bring back that, word, that, yeah. that craziness and, and not rub off, you know, all of the, the sharp edges, you know, the, the rock and rollness of it. Yeah, there you go. That's it's, it's gotta be a little bit scary, you know? Yeah, I turn on a pedal and go, oh, geez, this might blow my speakers. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Meatbox. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, oh, yeah. Meatbox. <laughs> no, I've been looking for one of these for a while, and they uh, started clearing them out, and I had some cash. I'm like, I got to grab one uh, before mm -hmm. they disappear. Um, after Forever. After the buyout, because I was like, I'm, I hit that moment. I'm like, I don't know if this is going to come back, and I don't want to, I don't want to be wrong uh, if I decide to pass. So I don't I see how pick it up. Back, to tell you the truth. Um, the, the, uh, the chip is no longer produced. Um, you, you can make it do, you can make some other chips do the same thing, but the, the actual original mm -hmm. chip is no longer produced. Um, so there's a, a, that technical hurdle, but also the, the, the way that, that, that uh, Digitech and DOD are now with Samsung. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, I just don't see how they can, I don't see them producing any more DOD stuff other than what they already have. And that breaks Sad. my heart. It is. It is kind of. It's 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 bittersweet because on on the one hand, uh, while I feel like we were we're really hitting our stride and doing cool stuff, um, it also we also ended on a high note. You know what I mean? It's it's not like all sure. of a sudden we fell into this weird decline. Where we were making crappy stuff for ten years. It's like we we're bam, 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 cool, 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 and then nothing. So it's, it's kind of like, um, you know, le leaving on a high note, I guess. Yeah. That's a sure. good way to look at it. <laughs> just just staring at us. I know. I'm just, I, the, the really morbid thought that the, the really morbid thought that just hit my head is like, so like the 27 club, because there's so many great musicians that have just gone out like that, um, in, in their prime. Uh, so that's, that's like, that's really sad to think about it like that. I don't know why my brain went there, but. No, I mean, I, I love yeah. this stuff. It's so inspiring and it really it bums me out. Affordable, too. Yeah, that's something we talked about last week is uh, uh, making sure that there's units on the market that are accessible to beginner players with limited budgets that yeah. are still inspiring and not just this polite and uh, I'll say it boring. Um, and it, 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 these don't leave these don't look, find my, I don't find myself feeling lacking when I playing through this kind of stuff. So. Oh, well, oh, cool, man. Some yeah. of them are still polite. I think that the phaser 201 was polite. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a two, it's a two stage phaser. So it doesn't, doesn't get all crazy sweeping. Yeah. And, and I actually, so yeah. I'm a, I'm a uh, fuzz nerd. 
And in, in my opinion, two stage phasers and fuzzes fit together better. When you have a two, a four stage or higher and a fuzz, it just turns mm-hmm. into a swirly mess, which is useful sometimes. But uh, I don't know. I, I just feel like you know, two stage phasers and fuzzes are are peanut butter and jelly. No, I wish I tried that. Sounds I don't have that pedal anymore because you get that you get that sweet, but it's not overpowering, and you know, you, so you have a little a little bit of movement. But it's not like a, it, it doesn't take the, the, the front of the stage. It's support. It's nice. Yeah. But you're right. Yeah. The, nice. the, the 201's more on the polite side. This is nice. I, sh- I should have done an extra thing on there in retrospect. Like maybe make us have a switch so we can go from two what to would you four have done? stage or something. But... Yeah. Well, now you have. Spiral, spiral electronics. Spiral effects. electric effects. Yeah, um, and I haven't done any modulations yet, so maybe that's maybe that's yeah. where I should go. It's do some, do some phase, maybe some flange. You know, track down some some good old BBDs. But yeah, mm-hmm. I've been concentrating mostly on 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 dirt and stuff like that until I you know get my sea legs and and can get more complicated. So yeah, but I've only been in, in business mm-hmm. for what, about what, what, two years, what, so. Yeah, what kind of pedals do you have right now? I haven't, I haven't gotten to play any of them. Oh, I got to play them and they're sick. Thank you. Okay, rub it in. <laughs> well, let me let me do a quick rundown. I've got uh, my first pedal was the the Black Spiral Fuzz, and that's um, kind of a um, a more evolved take on the Carcosa Fuzz that I did at, at uh, DoD. Um, instead of having the uh, uh, the high low. Uh, switch it has a three-way toggle um, for the clipping section and and i'm using the nanolog n2 oh i think i've got one right here yeah so here's here's some of the tin can nanologs so the, the nanolog is actually an interesting technology it's um i don't know if you can see that but i'll put it on my my giant forehead so you can kind of see it on that background <laughs> but uh so I, I use the Nanolog N2 on there, and I, and I mix it with uh, silicon in one position and then uh, germanium in the other. And uh, then the next is the uh, yellow spiral um, uh, drive, and that is a uh, – so, so I'm, I'm a huge fan of the, the DoD 250. And so the, the yellow spiral oh, yeah. drive is kind of a, a, a take on that. But it has uh, what I call – has the girth control – and what that is, is it's a, a cap network that allows you to shave off um, the, the low end. And it, it makes it so that you can actually f- uh, focus and tighten it up. So when you're running into like a, a dirty amp, a dirty amp channel, um, it doesn't get overwhelming and wooden mm-hmm. with, the, with the base. And it, it also has a three-way clipping control too. So it goes from LED uh, to nanolog um, to uh, silicon. And the, the silicon and the, and the LED sections are blended with the nanolog, so you always have a little bit of that nanolog flavor um, in it. And that's the yellow. And then I have the right. And and go ahead. I was just to say, I remember specifically playing through that one, like cranking the gain up and playing with the girth knob, and finding myself like, wait, that's that's something that I've always wanted out of a two hundred and fifty. Um, when I play with, like high gain stuff, and now like having it just kind of built in, just seems like mind blowing. That like really caught my attention. Cool, man. It's, it's, mm-hmm. So the 250 circuit is weird. So I, there's been a lot of people who have done uh, takes on the 250. Um, and mm-hmm. the, the, the normal thing that people do is like, oh, you know, the obvious thing that this needs to have is a tone control. And so they throw in a tone control. And in my opinion, that the, 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 the 250 is a lot like the fuzz face where it's, you know, a small number of parts. And so if you do anything radical to it, it just makes it into a completely different pedal. If you add a tone knob to mm-hmm. 50, it turns into something else. And, and in my opinion, not great. And so the, the, the girth control allows you to have some tonal control without screwing up the basic voicing of the, of the 250. And, you know, it's yeah. one of the cool things about the 250 is that if you, your guitar still sounds like your guitar and your amp still sounds like your amp. You're just getting, you know, more, more hair. And so you don't want to mess with that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think it's a, a better incarnation of like a blues breaker type. Uh, response where you still want that organic sound out of your guitar and amp, put a little bit more hair to it. Awesome, man. Yeah. Let's see. And then so that's, that's my opinion. 
brings us to uh, the brute, and the brute is um, uh, a fuzz, but it's kind of a variation on the black. But it's it's um, well. So to explain the brute, I probably have to go back a little bit. So I, I have what I call my incubator, and the the incubator is where um, I actually I, I mod my own pedals just to, through experimentation sake, just to mess around. And then usually if I find a cool mod, I'll offer that as a standalone pedal um, that people can get. Um, and in, in the process of doing a couple of different mods, uh, the Brute was kind of born. So the Brute is, is basically a, 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 a batch of one-off modifications put into a production pedal. Um, so it's, it's, you can consider it to be a variation of the black, but it's kind of, it's kind of more than that. But I use uh, BC-108 uh, transistors in there, so it sounds more vintage. Um, it, uh, I, I re nice. drone control, so it's, it's a, a little bit darker. So the guys who find the black to be too bright, which is usually you know, like a lot of single coil players and stuff like that, I recommend the Brute. It, uh, yeah. it, it, does, it does that. Uh, it's, it's, I would say it kind of has a fuzz face flavor, but without all of the, the, the weird idiosyncrasies. It doesn't mind where it's put in the chain. You know, it doesn't care if it has a buffer in front of it. In fact, it likes really hot pickups, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Uh -huh. So it doesn't you know, have those same weaknesses. Um, and then from there is the white and the white is my boost and, um, it's a JFET boost and it started life. Um, so back in the day, Jimmy Page, uh, used an old Barkus Berry preamp, uh, called the 1550 S and it wasn't really a stomp box. It was like supposed to be on top of your amp. And, uh, and I, and I had one, you know, back in the, in the eighties. And it sounds great. It's, it's my favorite boost, but it's really inconvenient because there's no foot switch and that kind of stuff. And so the, the white was kind of my, yeah. my take on that, but it evolved from there. I put the girth control on there. So it has the, the cap network, like the, like the, uh, the yellow does, but it also has an order switch. And what the order switch does is it allows you to have that girth control before the clipping diodes or after the clipping diodes. And so what that does is it makes it so that you can send more bass to the clipping diodes and that adds more compression and it changes the feel a bit, also makes it a lot you know, more aggressive. And so you can go from a, uh, a semi-clean boost, change the order, and you, you now have a really dirty boost that uh, really complements you know, cleaner amps and stuff like that. And so that's, that's the white. And, cool. oh, and, and the circuit kind of evolved too. So it's, it's, it really doesn't have anything, any, any relation to the, the Barker's Berry 1550S other than the fact that it also uses JFETs. So it's, it kind of just did its own thing as it kind of, you know, as I developed it. And then uh, most recent is the Red Spiral and the Red Spiral Drive Channel. And that's a collaboration with Christopher from Shoe Pedals. And uh, uh, he and I worked on the, the DOD Looking Glass. And the, the red spiral is kind of a, a, an evolution of that uh, circuit as well. Um, it has an extra gain stage. Um, it's, uh, it's MOSFET, uh, but it's, it's a, it, it's, it, it was really designed for guys who play clean amps. Um, Christopher plays clean amps. So I, 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 I play mostly dirty. Um, my, my clean is what most players would call their, uh, you know, rhythm or grit channel or, you know, grit tone. Um, that, but, but Christopher plays a really spanking clean thing. And so the red spiral is designed for those players where you want to have basically add an extra amp channel to your clean amp. And so it gives you three toggle selections of gain. Um, so you can use it as a boost or use it as a higher gain piece. But uh, yeah, that was, that was, uh, it also has the tone pyramid too. Oh, and the tone pyramid is cool because it's, uh, so Christopher has been experimenting over the past few years with uh, changing um, how a pedal interacts with your uh, guitar's pickups, because of course you know when you change your your impedance from the pickup to the to the pedal, um, there's a resonant peak, and it depends upon how long your cable is and that kind of stuff. And so the tone pyramid actually has a, a peak control that allows you to change the resonant peak of your pickup when it's attached to it. So the red spiral likes to be first in the chain, but uh, uh -huh. those are that's all the pedals I've got <laughs> right now. Nice. I play through a clean amp typically, so that's uh, that has my intrigue. I've got a Fender Tone yeah. Deluxe or a Tone Master. Tone Master. There we go. Uh, Reverb Deluxe sitting over here. That's uh, been treating me really nicely the last few months. Yeah. So, so Fender amps are typically known for being a little mid scooped. 
Um, so the nice yep. thing about the red spiral is you're able to accentuate, you know, those mids with by changing that resonant peak, and so they, they marry really well with Fender amps. Nice. All right, I might have to, I might have to get my hands on one of those. So yeah, it's it's. What about uh, things you need to get your feet on, Andrew? What? What about things you need to get your feet on? <laughs> get on um, your feet. Get on my feet. That that is that is quite the transition. All right. Uh, sorry, um, I, for, I just realized we forgot to do that. That was that was a good. So we had a sponsor with... several weeks ago. <laughs> now you're going to make me feel embarrassed. My feet are so naked right now. But uh, we uh, had a sponsor a few weeks ago. It was um, Society Socks. Andrew, can you put it on the camera? Let's show the packaging. Sorry, I just ripped the top off. Old um, socks with a social cause. So for every pair that one buys from Society Socks, they give away um, a pair to a homeless shelter. Nice. All right, you guys aren't you guys aren't ready for this uh, visual effect? Uh, practical effects. Ready? Nice. Oh, those are cute. <laughs> Uh, oh, got, you got two pairs? I got two pairs. <laughs> nice. Uh, so it looks like I've got orcas. Oh, that's so appropriate for the Pacific Northwest. It's very Pacific Northwest. And then I've got this this red, very uh, vibrant pattern here. I think that's called has, the laser beam. Uh, that seems appropriate. And it also has orange in it, so I approve. Oh, there you go. Nice. Well, happy early birthday, Andrew. <laughs> Yeah, they were men's socks, gift. so I didn't keep any of them. How about early Christmas? Because socks are a Christmas gift. So, so do you They're roll your pants high enough so people can see your socks? Uh, I, I do cuff my pants. Do you peg Usually them? because I'm short and uh, buying pants with appropriate lengths is difficult. <laughs> um, but I, I do sometimes roll my, uh, the extra layer up just to show off some socks. I don't know if Tom is laughing because I mentioned pegging pants. <laughs> and I think Andrew, you're way too young for that. Uh, that's, I, that's I know what that girl, is. Man. That's that's uh, that's what we use yeah. all the time. I, I might be are, I might be converse. very young. Yeah, we're we're in our low top converse and you know pegging our jeans and <laughs> wearing the half socks. Yeah, <laughs> I like a I like a pant that uh, cuffs like tightly around the ankle. <laughs> Yeah, I remember was that, I was in. There was that period during the '90s when when pants got all baggy, um, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a little That's sad. Nice. I like I like the I like the yeah. the clean the clean look. Mm -hmm. For sure, I remember when I was in high school. It was like '80s week, and I was like, "I've got to dress up like like it's the '80s." And I remember my parents like trying to explain like what pegging was, uh, ah. and. <laughs> Uh, I remember I, I couldn't get it to work quite right, so I tried to use the cheater method with a clothespin, and I remember stabbing my thumb. It was just a mess. Um, oh, you stabbed your thumb with a clothespin? Yeah. That's a feat, dude. I have. Are you thinking? Are no, you no, thinking sorry, of... safety pin. Safety pin. I was about to say. Like, like, there we go. Did you get a splinter? How did you stab <laughs> yourself with a clothespin? No. Yeah, Tom. For for reference, I'm a, I'm a child and turned 26 in a couple weeks. Uh, so when when you say that you you said uh, you started in ninety five, I was born at the end of ninety four. Oh, so you're you're, you're so like a, I, I, you're like a newborn. I am, yeah. I, <laughs> I I frequently get called all sorts of derogatory childlike terms on the show. Uh -uh. Little buddy. <laughs> Little buddy is one of them. And that was actually, that was Emily has had maybe one too many gin and tonics at a hold steady show. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, that was, a, that was at the show. I, thought, I forgot. I'm like, wow, I went to concerts, concerts? once upon. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember that. Uh, that, that. All right, here we go. Actually, before the, the oh, look at hey. that. Yeah. Socks. Yeah, so b before the the podcast started, Emily and I were talking about the how how COVID has changed everything. But that's a huge change. Is you know, it's it's been so long since I've been to a live show. It's been so long since I played a live show. It's it's very frustrating. I played a live stream show, but it's not the same. It's not the same when there's not an audience there, because I can't go into the audience and do my guitar solos like I usually do. <laughs> well, it's it's a it's weird, weird end of the songs too, right? I mean, you end your song and there's silence. There's no feedback, nothing at all. You're looking into a camera like we're doing now, and it's yeah. I, you know, I've yeah. seen other artists do it. To varying degrees of success, but there's always that weird, uncomfortable, you know, 4.5 seconds between when the song ends 
Yeah. The next one starts or when they say something. But yeah. It's like, and I don't know what's worse if there's like complete silence or if like the crew goes. <laughs> the, the golf club. Because like, because it. Cause it because when the crew like track. goes, when the crew is like, "Woo, yeah," it sounds like you're playing to a bar with three people, and then <laughs> that almost sounds sadder. But that's that's, need, that's something we have to figure out, though, as as artists, right? We have to figure out how we're going to make that work. Because right now, it's it's awkward. I made gotta, the joke. I I made the joke that I we should get on the ready, like on one of our phones, like sound of an audience clapping, and then when the song is over, just someone goes up to their microphone and just goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, a drum trick, like a trigger uh, attached to a drum machine. So that way, towards the end of the song, your drummer's doing his fill. He just knocks it real quick to to cue the track, and just as the song's dying down, you hear it start to the the audience start to get loud, mm-hmm. and like have that. it set. No, nope. or have a cricket sample. You could have it like, oh, what's, what's... we should do that. <laughs> we should do that, or get the sound guy to do it. Get like a Roland Octopad or something. So if it's eight song set, you got a different clap track for each song. So one of the things that my band used to do is I used to have uh, samples uh, recorded on my jam man. And so in between, you know, as we're tuning and stuff, I'd play samples and, you know, maybe it's time to bring that kind of stuff back where you have uh, some sort of transition from song to song. So you're not having that, that silence, or I guess you can just learn to embrace the silence and, and be okay with it. But right now it's really weird. Yeah. When I do solo stuff, I'll do like, I'll, I'll make a really quick little loop and then I'll go in tune or I'll get prepped for the next song. So I just like get my loop, do that. Then I set my settings to my guitar and then I stop the loop and play the next song. But that's, that's a good way. I don't to know. Do that would, I, yeah. I seen Jeff, the brotherhood, uh, when I saw them for the first time at Webster hall, no, it wasn't, I don't know. It wasn't Webster hall. It was the Bowery. And, um, they would do just play songs on their phone between songs when they were tuning. I was like, Oh, all right. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's kind of our responsibility, right, as as artists, to to figure out how to make that work. That's, yeah, it's weird when there's fewer people on stage because normally I think that would be filled with banter, but when it's just like two people or one person, there's no like between song banter. Yep. I mean, there could be. It just depends on how crazy you want to seem in front of everybody. Like, hey, Andrew, how was that show? I, I thought it was pretty great, Drew. Uh, what about you? <laughs> we killed uh, that last song, didn't we? <laughs> and, and the, I, I, the audience loves it what audience <laughs> some people are just bad at banter too like that's true I, I've, 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 I've had a friend who she would try to do banter between songs sometimes and it would just be like so awkward like I, I, I you know I sometimes not everything I say is appropriate like I like to make an appropriate joke sometimes but maybe maybe when you're on stage to people who don't know you and you're a little folky and you're a little folky person maybe making Maybe making uh, dick jokes is not like <laughs> the most. Everyone loves good It's dick not the best way to I mean, get a response. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. Or she'd, because she'd be it, about to play like a song about like having sex, and then she would be like, My dad hates this song, and her dad's like in the audience. <laughs> <You're> like, oh. <laughs> I, I think another interesting dynamic, though, is no. you know, when you're at a live show and you, and, and you do banter, um, half the time the audience can't even hear what you're saying. It just turns into kind of woo woo woo. But when you're doing a, a you know a live stream, they can hear every little sniff and snort and everything. So you know maybe it's a chance for us yeah. to get really good at banter. Yeah, maybe. Mm. I think that the weirdest thing about on stage banter is that you can't like sometimes the people on the stage can't hear each other either because you're like, well, I don't have any of of the guitarist vocals in my mix, so I can't right. hear. When Emily makes a joke, maybe Dan can't, the drummer can't hear me at all. Yep. <laughs> like, what'd she say? What's she talking? Yep. I can, can tell the, 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 the audience <laughs> is laughing. She said something funny. <laughs> so I should laugh right. and then, <laughs> no, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, that's, or, an, that's another weird or, one that people don't or, understand. You could just turn on all of your delays and reverbs to a really sick swell in between songs and then bring back your volume and just tune. Because... Just let it build. It's swell. Just, just <laughs> let it build up, and as it starts to die out, count, count in for the next song. There's an yeah. idea. I like that. There you go. No, I partial. do that sometimes. I actually do that um, with Sunday Crush sometimes, going from one song into another. Because um, our first th- song we play is Kiss to Death. It's in- instrumental, and the second song is a bit of a rock song. But if there's like a pause in between, it sounds weird, because on the record, they kind of flow into each other. So I will hit just like the 
the um, infinite repeats on the delay of imposter Wallace by bookworm effects or something. And, uh, and then the drummer will do a crack and then the singer will start. And so it just, it flows. That's, that's, that's my favorite way to make sure that flows well into um, itself because the timing is always a little bit different, especially now that we're not as tightly rehearsed as we had been right when COVID hit. Yeah, it's um Yeah, I could see that. Just yeah. don't do what I what my old bandmate did. I I was in a the one show we played in that band. Um we, we had a three song set for a battle of the bands and we were all rehearsed, all fired up, but our drummer bailed on us last second. Uh so we had to like we were playing along to drum tracks, which is really Oh, we've done that. It's really uh, weird. It's awkward. It's super weird and for, especially for a battle of the bands, like no one was into it and it wasn't like a genre specific battle of the bands or like we were like one of two rock bands. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyway, so we get through the, the second song, like going to the third song and the singer just like, he's upset because the audience is reacting. He's like, I don't know if you guys know, but you're at a rock show. So up and, <laughs> and I'm like, buddy, you can't just yell at the audience like that. If they don't like us. We're, we're, we just lose. Yeah. But yeah, that really doesn't super really work awkward. Well. I'm like, it's, don't. Uh, that's not cool. No. It's, no. it's never a good look. I, I was so embarrassed. Um, and that's clearly why I screwed up the guitar solo on the last song. Um, we'll, we'll go with that. Uh, you could uh, we, we now yeah, with our live streaming and, and, and COVID gigs, you can, you can berate the audience all you want, or, you know, yell at them to get out there and start moshing things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on guys. Start a mosh pit right now. Right now. <laughs> Well, There's one show. <laughs> Elvis Costello plays a song called I Can't Stand Up for Falling Down. And one time, I guess he was really mad at the audience. So he started saying, You can't stand up for sitting down because they were all sitting. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't go over well. <laughs> Yikes. I don't, think it, I don't think it improved anything. I think that you can like encourage people to. That's what I do when I go into the crowd for my solos, is usually to like pretend to like lasso people with my really long cable and like pull them in like nudge them closer to the stage it usually works actually <laughs> it's like they feel shame and then jenna <laughs> does it for a song and then i do it again like get out there nice it's kind of cute yeah, yeah. yeah now you're people can respond over. well enough to that yeah. all right so yeah. tom Ooh. before before we wrap things oh we've got so many good ideas on this episode um so before we 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 say uh end of episode while we've got you here uh one of my favorite things in the last few months uh in covid just kind of scrolling through my news feeds when you've got stories about what it was like uh working at dod and whatnot and uh and digitech and is sharing some of those and you share those in uh one of the the dod appreciation groups yeah the the, the appreciation society on facebook yep yep so there's the and person, there's i always and uh, one of them is the, is the fan, the fan, the OD fan club, um, which has less members and less action. But the one that sees the most action is, is the Appreciation Society. And that was pretty fun. It's not just me either. There's there's like four other guys that are ex Digitech and DOD that, that talk about stuff too. Uh, you know, Rick Kreifel, John Hansen. Um, um, uh, I can't think of who else. But, but yes, yeah, but it's, 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 a, it's a fun group. It's it's cool because yeah no I've been a lot of guys who are big fans of, of the Jason Lamb era stuff too so it's not just me talking about my crap you know it's it's other guys talking about you know different eras and stuff and they're you know various fans of uh, the the multi effects and stuff like that so it's a pretty wide ranging group. I've been really enjoying it and uh, I guess I'm going to put you on the spot if you don't mind and I do you have a story so some a story that you'd like to share that might be a little off the wall or something that we would love to hear as like an inside track of what things were like a little bit of uh, nostalgia lane here. Oh boy. So, so you're kind of, you are putting me on the spot. There's, there's, there's a lot. Um, the, um, I, I guess the, 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 not, nothing is specific, but I guess the weirdest thing is, is when you're working for a huge corporation like Harmon, so, so a lot of it, what, I, okay. So what a lot of people don't realize is that Harmon isn't just Harmon, uh, pro. So, uh, DBX, Digitech, DOD, BSS, you know, all those audio companies, 
are only a really small part of what mm-hmm. Harman was. So Harman International was actually a way bigger company. They had an automotive division. They had you know an install division for installed sound, that kind of thing. And so we were very small. So working for a, a little company that makes pedals inside this giant organization was was quite a challenge. And everything we did was pretty much a battle because the other the other divisions didn't understand what we were doing. Had, had no conception. So we were like this little rock and roll mm-hmm. company you know, stuck inside this, this giant, really, um, kind of straight laced, uh, you know, international company. So it was, it was a very strange dynamic on, on, the, on one hand, it was freeing because we could do stuff very, very quickly uh, without, you know, uh, much impediment because people didn't know what the heck we were doing. But this, this, I used to call it the eye of Sauron, but as soon as somebody from another division, you know, zeroed in on us, you know, then all of a sudden, all these different layers would, would suddenly appear and all that kind of stuff. So it was, it's, it was a, a very educational, but yet frustrating experience. <laughs> but, but we got a lot done, though. It was cool. Um, I, I, I'm guessing that doesn't, isn't as salacious as you were looking for. But uh, some of the more salacious things I probably can't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think that's really interesting perspective to to bring into things. Um, I mean, I, I have a corporate day job, and I, I resonate with that a little bit, and I can definitely under, can kind of feel like I could put myself in that place for a moment and kind of imagine what it was like for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's some of the, the 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 funnier things would be, you know, we we'd get towards the end of a project, and um, it was it was the names some of the names of the pedals, you know, when I came up with the, you know, Polara obscure and that kind of stuff, as soon as corporate would get wind of it, they'd be like, what does this mean exactly? And so I'd have to do like a, a meeting <laughs> with these people about the name of a pedal because they were worried that it meant something, you know, one of the questions I got was, is this something from urban dictionary that we should be worried about? I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> urban terrible, dictionary. Terrible wow. names, but we didn't use them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Are there any in particular that they were like concerned with? Um, yeah. Um, let's see. So, so the, the, the mosaic, that's, this is a good example. So the mosaic, when it came out, um, it it was first going to be called the Zodiac. And, um, if you look at the mosaic, it has, it has like the, the astrology symbol and that kind of stuff. And so they saw the astrology symbol and the Zodiac and, and they were kind of freaked out. They're like, what does this mean? And, and, you know, when, when you get into kind of the more uh, uh, spooky and esoteric stuff, I mean, the, the astrology and the Zodiac is like the most inoffensive, you know, entryway into that kind of stuff. So I didn't even see how that could be an issue, but they had a problem with it. Um, uh, I ended up changing the name, but it wasn't because of that. I ended up changing the name because our legal department uh, was, was worried that, that they couldn't trademark Zodiac. And so I named it Mosaic instead. Fair. But, so th- there, there were some names too. You know, oh, yeah, it's a killer name. Trademark. Oh, thanks, thanks. Yeah, uh, it's. Uh, I think it would have been cooler as the zodiac, but you know, what are you going to do? I mean, twelve. You know, twelve strings emulator. So we have the twelve signs of the zodiac. It kind of all fit together. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I have a running list of of pedal names that I've been keeping for years, and uh, and so every once in a while, you know, I I put one. Oh, the dirty robot. That was one they had a problem with. They, they were they were convinced, oh. they were convinced <laughs> that that was a, a an Urban Dictionary reference. So I'm like, no, man, it's it's a it's a real thing. It's a it's, it's a dance. robot. It's dirty. <laughs> so yeah, it's got dirty right in the name, Tom. You're not pulling anything yeah. over on anybody. It's yeah, right it's, in the name that's a, dirty. And in fact, now, now it makes you wonder if I should go on an urban dictionary and find out if there's, if dirty robot actually means something other than what I think it means. <laughs> Let's oh, no. challenge oh, accepted. Wow. Urban <laughs> guys like dictionary. <laughs> dirty robot. Yeah, I'll, I'll let I Emily not, do that. I might not even. Hmm. Oh, I, I just that. get a shrug emoji. No dirty robot. Oh, good. I was worried. So there is filthy really dubstep. There's some definitely gross stuff in here but jesus <laughs> okay yeah, don't, don't read that aloud sexy robots on there that's actually one of the tamer ones that i could read out loud 
Yeah, that's it's always the stuff you're like, there's no way that could be misconstrued is incredibly offensive. Oh my God. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I, actually, it's, it's kind of funny. Speaking of, you know, trying to find something on Urban Dictionary, one of the things, my favorite things I've been doing lately is I'll, I'll invent a fake band name. Um, like, um, <laughs> I, I don't know, uh, uh, Swamp Lights or something like that. Then I'll go on Bandcamp and do a search because someone somewhere has that name. And I've actually found some of the coolest freaking bands that way, just inventing a band name and then seeing if it actually exists. And they do. There's yep. cool bands out there. A little randomized search. <laughs> I just like to see if Crucial Haircut actually exists. I bet you. I, no. I, I've done that before as well. I remember I, was, I had this idea in my brain. I'm like, it would be sick to be in a band called the Bipolar Bears. Oh, and I looked it up I'm like, it's taken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, It was like one of those late night college nights where I was a little intoxicated and chatting with friends. I'm like, I've got it. That's actually a cool name. Yeah. Bipolar Bears. I'm, I'm not surprised it's taken though. That's a, that's a good, good yeah. play on words. Yeah. Oh. Nice. I'm a fan of puns. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that we've been going for just over an hour. Um, probably a good time to, to wrap it up. But Tom, where can where can the Internet find you? Uh, you can go to my website, which is uh, simple. Just www.spiralelectricfx, with separate letters, F and X dot com. Um, uh, Facebook, just type in Spiral Electric FX and you'll find me. Um, Instagram is the same thing. But, uh, you know, I try to keep pretty up to date on, on both Facebook and Instagram, uh, posting stuff where, you know, you'll, you'll be able to see me actually in the middle of a build and I'll post pics of that and any latest experiments I'm working on. So it's, cool. it's pretty, pretty casual, pretty fun. It's a nice change from, from Harmon to be able to do my own thing and be able to let people in a little bit more intimately, I guess. So, Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm all over the place nice. on the web. Oh, and, and join the, if you're a DOD fan, join the DOD Appreciation Society. It's fun. Um, even if you're not a fan, uh, join because you might end up being a fan. Because I know there's a lot of guys out there that, yep. that, that aren't yep. <laughs> fans uh, of DOD, but uh, sometimes you get converted. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and and if, you like, if you like DOD pedals and you happen to have a volume or expression pedal, <laughs> I think I, I brought this with me to Nam. Uh, the, the expression, dude, the, show the, off. the jazz, right. the jazz cup, or the, the what is that the, the, on the left? Is that's snazzy? Awesome. We call it snazzy. <laughs> <laughs> and it glows in the dark. That is so, super cool. Sorry, shameless plug over. Do you, do you have do you have those available for sale? Can I get one? I didn't hear that. Okay. Yeah, oh. I'll send you one. I will send you one. I've got. You want one or two? Oh, dude, send me two. Because I have both the expression and the. <laughs> that is so cool. Nice. That's a popular one. Uh, I, I saw a picture online of a guy who had that that uh, jazz pattern tattooed on his arm. Um, wow. Funny. Wow. That's something to be saddled with, right? That's commitment. <laughs> that is commitment. Yes. Nice. They say they going in an envelope with your name on it and going out to in the mail tomorrow. Dude, yeah, I'll send you just my address. Send me your address awesome. after the show. No, just read it. Read it out loud right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. <laughs> I've got oh a notepad right here. <laughs> And I, uh, I got a pen. Don't do that. Don't do oh, that. Don't. All kinds of weird stuff. I was joking. Don't make, don't make me edit. It. Don't make me edit it. Oh my god. Oh. Well, um, to everyone out there, thanks so much for for tuning in via watching or listening. Um, please consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash get offset. We also have merch at getoffsetpodcast.com slash shop. Or if you don't want to spend any money but you would like to support the show. You can do that by leaving a rating and review on iTunes. It really does help us in the charts and get new listeners, et cetera. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know if I should say thanks for watching or thanks for listening now, because on the demos, I say thanks for watching. On the podcast, I say thanks for listening. And they had, let, let me look at the numbers. I think they had kind of similar, similar listen. Well, actually, no. 
Oh, wow, that's actually really close. How about I say thank you for listening because no one wants to watch my face. And you say thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for understanding. Thanks for listening. Thanks for understanding. Until next time, my name is Emily. My name is Andrew. And I'm Tom. That's Tom. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Goodbye. Goodbye.